This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about backing up Bitcoin, how to store Bitcoin, and in particular, how to use hardware wallets and recovery seeds. A lot of you have asked, what happens if I lose my, my hardware wallet? What happens if the company goes out of business, etc.? So I just want to talk through some of these issues so that you'll know how to store your Bitcoin safely. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So Bitcoin, the safest way to store Bitcoin is not on an onware, on is not in an online wallet, not in a browser wallet or anything that's called a hot wallet that's connected to the internet, but rather a what people would often call a cold wallet or a hardware wallet. These are actual physical devices. We can see uh, this person holding one right here. This is the Trezor, and there are two different kinds of Trezors. I should say I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. I'm not being paid. I'm just a customer of a few of them. So there are two different kinds of hardware wallets that Trezor sells. One is the Trezor One, which is the cheaper version. One is the Trezor Model T, which is the one I prefer. I prefer it because you enter everything on the screen itself rather than doing it via the computer or a phone. So this is the one that I prefer. It's currently, it looks like it's 149 euros, which is currently translated to about $170. So it's not cheap. If you only have $100 worth of Bitcoin, it may not make sense to buy a $170 wallet to store it. That's something you'll have to decide for yourself. But if you happen to own one Bitcoin and you think Bitcoin is going to 100,000 or a million as I do, then you definitely want to invest in a good hardware wallet. Trezor's a great company. Cold Card I like as well. They're a little bit, a little bit more difficult to use, but I do like them. Ledger is another well-known company. I don't like them as much because their software is not open source. Trezor, it's completely open source, and so it's much easier for the public to find bugs. So for this reason, I don't, I don't like Ledger wallets, but certainly a lot of people use them, and I could be wrong about that. Now, what people are always asking me is, what happens if my hardware wallet, if my Trezor gets damaged, for example, are my Bitcoin gone then? And so I want to emphasize, and I've talked about this before, Bitcoin is never actually stored in your hardware wallet. It's not like storing a, uh, a visual file or an MP3 or something like that that you might store on some USB device. It's actually not stored on the hardware wallet. It's just an entry in the Bitcoin blockchain, which is spread all around the world. There are thousands and thousands of copies of the Bitcoin blockchain, which is just a ledger of all the transactions that have happened. And what's on that blockchain is there's a public address that has your Bitcoin, and there's a private key associated with that public address. You could think of the public address as like your email, for example. You would give your email to, to most people so they could contact you. Your private key would be like your password for your email. You would never share your password. And if someone knows your private key, your Bitcoin key, they can actually move your Bitcoin, which means they can spend it. They can send it to their own public address, and then the Bitcoin is gone. There's no there's no centralized body that you can go to and say, uh, please restore my Bitcoin. It's basically gone. So your private key is very, very important to store. And this is what a hardware wallet is used for. It's used to store your private key. I should emphasize, always buy your hardware wallet directly from the company itself. And when it arrives, make sure that the package hasn't been tampered with in any way. Because if someone installs some bad hardware or bad software on there, they could use it to steal your Bitcoin. For this reason, never buy a hardware wallet from Amazon, or, and certainly not from eBay. Never buy a used Trezor or used hardware wallet. Here's a list of public addresses for Bitcoin. And we can see over here on the left side, these are the public addresses. So if you want to send these people some Bitcoin, all you do is type in this public address and send it to them. But you don't need to send them any Bitcoin. These addresses contain 73,000, 69,000. These are tens of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. You can see the Bitcoin can't be hacked. If it could be, we'd be very easy to just go in here. We know that these various people or institutions hold this Bitcoin, and yet it's just sitting there and no one can touch it without the private key. Private key will normally look like this. It'll be a 64 character hexadecimal number. And it'll be each character will, character will either be 0 through 9 or A through F. So it's a very long, 
very long uh, number. This would be pretty impossible for most humans to remember. And this is the reason that we've come up with something called the recovery seed. But this is actually a private key. This is an example from online. Uh, don't try to use this anywhere. Uh, I don't think I don't think it works. I'd be very surprised. But basically, public public address, private key, just so we know that we're all speaking the same language. Now, I like to buy my Bitcoin using Coinbase Pro. They seem to have the best fees and commissions. Again, I'm not associated with them at all. But you can you can basically set up an account with them. You can wire in some <clears throat> or transfer in some U.S. dollars or euros, and then you can buy Bitcoin. You can see I currently only have $990 in here. I have zero Bitcoin. I don't store my Bitcoin on an exchange. That's what happened with Mt. Gox. You always want to control your Bitcoin. You want to control the private keys associated with it. So I buy it. I buy my Bitcoin on an exchange like Gemini or Coinbase Pro, and then I withdraw it and hold it on a hardware wallet like a Trezor. So if you want to withdraw it, you can just buy your Bitcoin and then you click withdraw. Then you click BTC. BTC is the only real Bitcoin. And then you just click right here where it says crypto address. And what you do is you just put the public address that's associated with your Trezor, for example. You load it in here. And there's sort of a whitelisting process where it has to wait uh, 24 hours before it will let before Coinbase will let you send your Bitcoin anywhere. But after you've done that, uh, and for this reason, you might actually want to set up the whitelist address before you buy your Bitcoin. So it's not sitting there on the exchange for 24 hours. But you basically put in the address and it will be sent right over to the public address that's associated with your Trezor. And so that's the, the basic mechanics for buying Bitcoin and sending it to a hardware wallet like a Trezor. And when you get your Trezor in the mail, it's very easy to set up. You basically just plug it into a USB port of your computer. It installs the latest firmware and you name the device, you add kind of an external pin, and then you do what's called the backup. Um, you create a backup. Now this is the most important part. This is what I'm gonna be emphasizing today. When you create a backup, and there's just an option when you're, when you're um, when you're installing your Trezor, it will say uh, create a backup. And when it does that, what it's, what it's going to do is it's going to give you 12 or 24 words. And it's, it's going to give them to you in a certain order. It can only do this once. And so it's very important that you write it down correctly. And what it will normally do, let's say you're using the Trezor Model T, which provides uh, gives you 12 words in a certain order. It will give you these words, you write them down, and then it will make you re-enter them. So it will say, for example, what is word number four? What is word number seven? What is word number 11? Just to make sure that you have all the words in the correct order. And again, this can only be done once. Now this recovery seed is very, very important. You'll often hear it called a recovery phrase, a backup phrase, a word seed. It's just 12 or 24 words. Sometimes it's 18 words, but now it's normally 12 or 24 words. And those words are in a fixed order. They're taken from something called BIP39, which is a list of, of many, many different words. These are kind of common English words. You can see there are more than 2,000 of them. And this is sort of the pool that it's taken from. And your Trezor wallet will randomly pick 12, uh, 12 recovery words. It's important not to pick them yourself. If you pick them yourself, they might not be random enough. So the Trezor One and the Lad Ledger Nano, they each will give you 24 words for a backup. The Trezor Model T will give you 12 words. I think there's a way to change it so you can have it give you 24 words perhaps, uh, but it's not, really, it's not really important. As I said, these words are taken from an industry standardized list. I guess they're 2,042 different words. As we said, it's called BIP39. I wanna emphasize if anyone knows your recovery seed, they basically own your Bitcoin. They control your Bitcoin. They can move it. They can spend it. They can send it to any address of their own choosing. They'll send it some, to some anonymous public address, and then they will own your Bitcoin. And there's no way to reverse this process once it's happened. And so this is why it's very important. You'll probably never see your, your private key, but you will see this recovery seed. And it's very important. It is basically your ownership in Bitcoin, whether it's $10 worth of Bitcoin or $10 million worth of Bitcoin. You never want to enter your recovery seed into a web browser form, into an email form. You never want to take a picture on your phone and have it be uploaded to the cloud. And you never want to send it in an email to yourself either. 
the only place you should ever enter a recovery seat is on a brand new hardware wallet on the device itself. That's why I like the Trezor Model T the best. Now these, these private keys and the recovery seeds associated with them. So basically there'll be a private key and then there's some algorithm, I guess, that's used to derive the recovery seed. If you have a recovery seed, there's an, a, a reverse algorithm that can be used to, to create the private key. And then that private key is used to sign a transaction, which means that then you can send the Bitcoin. This is all taken care of automatically by the hardware wallet. So you don't even have to really understand uh, how it works technically. But these private keys and the associated recovery seeds, they're stored offline in your hardware wallet's microprocessor. So even if your, your hardware wallet is plugged into your USB port, it's not really online. I've never heard of a case where uh, some virus could make its way from your computer into the hardware wallet. Of course, it's possible. There are always risks, but I haven't heard of it. So theoretically, and I've, I've checked this multiple places online, you should be okay even if you plug your Trezor into a computer that's infected with malware. Now, I recommend that you have a good virus program on your computer. You check for malware regularly, uh, but theoretically, you should still be okay. Now, why never put your recovery seed, these 12 words, in an email to yourself and never put them in some online, online storage uh, database? Simply because there's, there are a lot of viruses and malware out there that are constantly searching for 12 or 24 word sequences. People have gotten very smart. They know that if you find an email that has 12 words in it, you might as well, you know, you can test it and see if it's a Bitcoin uh, recovery seed, and it usually is. So this is why you never want to, uh, you want to be very careful. You don't want to say the words out loud. For example, your phone could be listening. Uh, you want to make sure you put a piece of tape over your camera on your phone or on your computer, especially when you're writing it down in case there's some malware that's recording a video of you writing down the words. Maybe you're on a laptop and it can see your hands, it can see the piece of paper. So you gotta be very paranoid. Don't do this in a Starbucks Starbucks coffee shop, for example. If someone has your 12 word recovery seed, they have your Bitcoin. Now the good news about this too, though, is that if you ever need to cross a border, if things ever get bad where you live and you wanna take your Bitcoin with you, you don't actually need to take a hardware wallet on your person, which will probably be confiscated and then uh, you you know you might be tortured to to release your your passcode or pin code, uh, but you can just basically memorize your 12 or 24 words, maybe you and your spouse or you and your kids, and you can basically go anywhere in the world and take your Bitcoin with you. This is why I say that Bitcoin's a superior monetary, a superior money technology to even something like gold. If you have a million dollars worth of gold, good luck crossing. A border with that. With Bitcoin, you could have $100 million worth of Bitcoin. You could go anywhere in the world and take your Bitcoin with you. So as we said, there's the list of the BIP39 words. The recovery seed, as we said, is 12 or 24 words. And now I'm going to show you what happens. A lot of people worry that what happens if Trezor goes out of business. Now, they're a very successful company, but you know anything could happen. If they go out of business and they stop supporting the Trezor wallet, it doesn't matter. You can restore your Bitcoin to a new hardware wallet, either a Trezor if they're still in business, for example, if you lose your Trezor wallet, or you can restore it onto any BIP39 compliant uh, hardware wallet. So the Ledger, the Cold Card, the Keep Key is another one. These are all BIP39 compliant. Compliant, As I said, it's an industry standard thing. So let's say, for example, you, you, you lose your Trezor wallet. Maybe your house burns down and your wallet, your actual hardware wallet was in there. So all you need to do then, uh, very quickly, very quickly, for example, if your hardware wallet's been stolen, is to, you get it by a new hardware wallet. So maybe you, you always want to have a, a blank one at home. You basically uh, plug the hardware wallet in, you plug your new Trezor into your computer, and you click right here where it says Recover Wallet. And then it will allow you to enter your recovery seed and your Bitcoin will be restored to this new location and uh, no one will be able to take it. Now, if you've lost your recovery seed, you need to send your Bitcoin to another, um, to a new hardware wallet that has a new recovery seed. If you've just lost your hardware wallet or it's been damaged, you can keep the same recovery seed. But obviously if your recovery seed's been compromised, you will need to 
generate a new one. In that case, you just go to the Trezor store, you buy a new Model T, you plug it in, you initialize it, you set up the new firmware, you just follow all the prompts, and it will generate a new, uh, a new recovery seed. And then what you do is you go to your old, uh, your old wallet, and you send the uh, the Bitcoin funds to your new one that has a different recovery seed. Hopefully, I made that clear. Uh, but if your if your wallet is just destroyed or if Treasure goes out of business, you can still restore your Bitcoin onto any other hardware wallet. Most hardware wallets, I haven't seen any that are not BIP39 compliant. I will link to the uh, the directions for how to restore your Bitcoin to a new Trezor, how to restore it to a ledger, for example. So you may have originally had your Bitcoin on a, on a uh, Trezor and then you can, um, uh, maybe you want to move it to a ledger, you can restore it onto a ledger as well or to a cold card, uh, cold card wallet, as we said. Now, another thing people like to do is they will back up their recovery seed, their 12 or 24 word phrase using a uh, some of these metal uh, metal products. And so here's one, crypto steel, uh, and you basically, uh, these are these are fireproof, they're made of stainless steel, and you could, um, they're shockproof, they're waterproof, etc. So a little bit safer than hold, storing your recovery seat on a piece of paper if your house gets flooded or burns down, etc. And they have various different kinds uh, where you can tell whether they've been tampered with, etc. You can just look at all the all the products here. Lastly, uh, something that some people do is that, let's say your recovery seed is 12 words. You could also do this with 24 words, but if your recovery seed is 12 words, you could store four words in one location, one physical location. Again, you probably don't want to do this online. Four words in one location, four words in another location, and then four words in a third location. Or you could write down your recovery seed twice. Maybe you get two of these crypto steals. Again, I'm not affiliated with them. Um, you could get two of them and store them in two different secure locations. The, the only place I would not suggest storing a recovery seed of any sort is in a, in a, a bank, um, inside of a bank, uh, in a safety deposit, deposit box. Because if things were to get really bad, as they have at various points in American history, for example, and in other countries, when things get really bad, there's a tendency for the banks to close. And if something becomes illegal, for example, if hardware wallets become illegal in the U.S., you're not going to want to go to your bank and ask for a hardware wallet. So you don't want to store your hardware wallet there. You don't want to store your recovery seed there in case the bank is taken over by some sort of hostile actors. Now, we're getting a little bit tinfoil hat here, but the, the sort of world that Bitcoin envisions, anything can happen. And so you don't want some silly mistake to separate you and your Bitcoin. Again, once you've generated your recovery seed, keep it safe. It is basically ownership in your Bitcoin. Now, this, this whole process is a little bit complicated. It sounds complicated. Once you do it, it's actually quite easy. And I think we've really been lulled into a sense of complacency. People, when I tell people about this process, they always sort of sigh and they think, well, I just want to leave my, leave my Bitcoin on Coinbase or leave it in a bank account somewhere, leave it on BlockFi or something like that. And what I would really encourage everyone to do is to take control of your monetary sovereignty. Learn how to control your own Bitcoin. This is the whole point of the system, to not be reliant on Goldman Sachs to hold your Bitcoin or Wells Fargo or, or any of these really scummy legacy companies that really don't have your best interest in mind. If you've seen all the lawsuits against Goldman and Wells Fargo over the, the previous few years, you know that they're not looking out for you. And so I would encourage you in the same way that you take control of your online presence, you don't, um, you know, you, you've, you learn not to post things that could get you in trouble. You learn not to share your, the password to your email or your Facebook account or Instagram account or something like this. In the same way, money is such a fundamental thing in economics. You need to learn how to control your own money. And I think Bitcoin, this is the best way we have to do it so far. Obviously, this is going to be too difficult for some people. But if you can learn it, you really set yourself apart and you're ready for the Bitcoin future. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I post my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.